Today I want to get into high speed sync, what it is, when to use it, how to use it, and when you shouldn't use it. First and foremost, what is high speed sync? High speed sync is when you go out of your native sync speed. So your native sync speed on most cameras is one over two fiftieth of a second. When you go past two fiftieth of a second, it starts getting this line on the bottom where it looks like a black bar. And if you're seeing this black bar, it means that you're trigger let you go past your native sync speed but your flash and your camera are not syncing up to one another and that can become problematic obviously because now you have a big dark line on the bottom of your camera and the reason for that is because when the shutter opens and closes the flash can't keep up with the curtain it doesn't sync there's a much better explanation I actually found it through googling preparing for this video I'm gonna link it down below he does a way better job than I do explaining the technical side go ahead and check that out but essentially what you want to do if you want to get out of that native sync speed is you want to enable high speed sync you can do it on your trigger. I'm using the X Pro S and on that it's as simple as just hitting the high speed sync button. When you turn that on and you have a flash, let's say like the AD200, it's going to show you the lightning bolt with an H, high speed sync. Obviously that's what that is. Once that's enabled, you're going to be able to go past your native sync speed. So instead of being limited to, let's say you're shooting a scene and you're going at 250th of a second ISO 100 and you're at F16, for example. You want to be shooting with depth of field in the middle of the day, let's say, or in the afternoon. Instead of putting on an ND filter, which is an option, you can buy ND filters and have them ready so you can screw them on. I personally don't like doing that. I find it easier just to hit a little button, and now I'm in high speed sync and I can go past my native sync speed. I'd rather just hit a button than having to go to my bag, put on a filter, and do all this. There have been times where the sun is just peeking under the horizon, and I'm not trying to run back to my bag, put something. I'd rather just hit a button and understand that now high speed sync is on and I'm able to get a shallow depth of field while being able to use off camera flash. Right there, that is the first point is being able to shoot with, let's say an F 2.8 lens or even a 1.4 lens and going past the native sync speed and being able to shoot with a flash. It has a very surreal look as you're seeing in the photos right now. It has a very soft look, which while I was collecting images for this video, I realized most of the photos that I use high speed sync on, or a lot of them at least, are maternity sessions. And why? I feel like with maternity sessions, you want that soft, dreamy feel. You don't want like hard lines and and very hard feeling lighting, let's say. Even though it doesn't change the quality of the lighting, something about having that softness behind your subject really adds a different element to your photo. And that's what I wanna get into. Why would you wanna use high speed sync when you want that softer background, when you want that depth of field, when you want that shallowness? You can also use it on headshots like you guys are seeing right now. I posted a video last week about shooting headshots with a softbox and using high speed sync. It really worked out really, really well because I could focus on their eyes and then the background just falls off and then you just get this beautiful softer feel around your subject. Now when would you not want to use high speed sync? I would say if you're shooting a reception, if you're shooting or before we get into that, another reason you could use high speed sync is if you want to freeze motion, for example. So if you're shooting in high speed sync and something's moving really, really quick, you can freeze it by having high speed sync because you, you can go past your native shutter speed. If you're stuck at 250th of a second as your max, you may get a little bit of blur in the photos. Actually, the photo I'm posting right now is of Mark and I remember shooting it and I was getting a little bit of blur because he was moving pretty fast. I should have turned high speed sync on then, but I just didn't. So it is what it is. Nobody's perfect. It would have prevented from having any motion showing whatsoever. Why would you not want to leave high speed sync on all the time? I'll tell you guys, because there is a drawback when it comes to using high speed sync. When high speed sync is working, it's not throwing just one big pop of light. It's actually throwing pulses of light that are quicker than what we can see with our eyes. So as the curtain on your shutter is going up and as it's going down, it's sending pulses of light. So instead of having that bar, it's filling it in on the way up and down. So that way you're not going to have any black bars. But what it's doing is it's sending a bunch of pulsating flashes instead of one big flash. And what does that do to your battery? Well, that's like redlining your car. It's pushing it. It's really pushing what your flash is doing. Your flash head is being stressed a little bit more. It's going to be draining the battery a little bit more. And the amount of distance that it travels is not going to be as efficient, let's say. So when we do a high speed sync shot, 
we have our flashes pretty much right outside of the frame because we understand that if we have it really far away like we would if we were shooting at f11 or anything like that on native sync speed it's not really going to be as effective it has to be pretty powerful that's why a lot of the times as you're seeing right now we use the magmod xl equipment with the bigger modifiers because we want more power coming out of it if we're using a smaller modifier or let's say a speed light and you're shooting in the middle of the day you really have to have that light right up to their faces for it to really show the faster you go on your shutter speed the less effective the flash appears and the slower your recycling time will be the more stress you're putting on the battery so it's not something that you want to leave on all the time i remember years ago one of our photographers had high speed sync on when we were shooting in the reception and i asked him like, hey why do you have high speed sync on and they said i don't know i just leave it on all the time and then i explained to him all these things that it's doing and he said oh crap i didn't know that so right there you learn that you use it when you need it and then as soon as you're done go ahead and turn it off so that way you're not draining your battery and pushing your flash for no reason it's like going speed limit and redlining the entire time there's no reason for that you know what i mean like just bring it back down change gears go back to normal and then you can always floor it again when you need it another time where my editors are going to be thanking me for doing this is sometimes I use high speed sync because I want to hide the dust in my sensor. I try to clean my dust as much as possible, but you know how it goes. Sometimes like there's only so much you can do and it's just not getting all the little particles. If you're shooting at F11, if you're shooting at F16, F22, even in the middle of the day, everything is going to show. So if I can get away, have my flash nice and close and go to like F4, F2.8 and have the same exact look basically if I'm on a wide angle lens, for example, but I don't have to clean off any dust. Yeah, I'll do that. So that way I'm not killing myself or my editor in post. So that's a little trick. Sometimes I do it. I don't always remember. And most of the times I don't, but it's a little trick. If your sensor is completely filthy, just go to high speed sync. If you can, if all the elements line up and that way you don't have to clean the sensor until you get home and then you can dust it all off. And generally speaking, you know, I just mentioned the wide angle lens. I don't usually use high speed sync with a wide angle lens. Usually what I do is I use high speed sync when I'm shooting with a very long lens, when I'm shooting with the 70 to 180, when I'm shooting with the 35 to 150 more in the 150 mark, because if I'm bringing high speed sync into the mix, why would I do it with something where you can't really tell that you're using it anyway, except if you're trying to hide dust. But if I want that depth of field, I'm going to use a lens that's going to give me optimal depth of field. That's going to give me the most depth of field. So usually if I put the 35 to 150 or the 70 to 180, I try to be as close to 180 as possible at 2.8 or try to be as close to 150 at 2.8 so I can get that shallow depth of field with off camera lighting. Sometimes I'll do one like the one you're seeing right now. It was like, I think it was like 28 or 50 millimeter or something like that. And I did 2.8 because I couldn't step back any further on the sand dunes without falling back. So, but I still did that shallow depth of field because I liked that softer look in the background. I also used a mag sphere on that one because I wanted it to look a little softer on them too. Actually, if you go to the MagMod community or if you go to the MagMod YouTube, you'll see the how we shot it video on that. And I'll link it down below as well. I don't want to bombard you guys with too much, but if you guys have any questions or anything that you want me to expand on, please leave a comment below. I appreciate every single one of you that has been commenting, every single one of you that has been subscribing to the channel. As you can tell, we've been posting very regularly and I'm going to continue doing it as much as I possibly can. So if you made it this far, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it. If not, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you watch 10 minutes of this and then <laughs> and then just went somewhere else. It's fine. That's cool too. Make sure go and find something that you like, guys. There, this is YouTube. There's plenty of videos out there. So if you like, if you like this, thank you. If you didn't, hey, maybe next time. Thank you so much.